In this video, we are going to demonstrate the reinforced concrete beam module in SpaceGas by designing some of the beams in this building. Before you can design a beam, you must have defined its cross-section and material. Let's open one of the beams in the Shape Builder to see how it's done. We can do it by just double-clicking the beam and then opening the Shape Builder. You can see that it has already been defined as a rectangular cross-section, which was created by just clicking the rectangle button and then typing in the desired depth and width. Note that the concrete beam design module will not change the cross-section, and so it is up to you to set it here. Let's just leave it unchanged and exit. Before leaving the Properties panel, you should check that the material is set to the desired grade of concrete. If not, you should select it from the Materials Library. As a final check, you could open the Sections and Materials panel and then click each material to verify that it is linked to the correct members. All of the other concrete members in this model have their cross-sections and materials already defined and the model has been analyzed. As you can see if we view some of the deflection, moment, and shear force diagrams. A number of combination load cases have also been set up and included in the analysis. So let's proceed with the beam design. We just have to select the members that make up the beam to be designed and then open the concrete beam design tool. It immediately performs a complete reinforcement design and presents it in the Concrete Beam Editor. During the design, it considers many, sometimes hundreds, of possible solutions and then decides on the optimal one based on various preferences that you can control. If you're happy with the design, you can just click OK to save and exit and you're finished. Or if you want to fine-tune the design a bit or switch to checking mode, then you can do so quite easily. Let's examine a few of the controls and indicators. We will start by inputting a title so that you can keep track of the beam. It's also very important to specify the ultimate serviceability and sustained load case lists correctly. If you are not sure of the load case numbers, you can click the button on the right to view and select them rather than listing them manually. We will limit the ultimate load cases to just the combinations. The serviceability load cases are used to calculate short-term deflections, and so we will use just the live loads and wind loads. Finally, the sustained load cases apply to long-term creep deflections, and so we will use just dead load. Note that leaving the ultimate load case list blank means that it will use all load cases, whereas leaving the serviceability or sustained load case lists blank means that they will have no load cases, effectively making them inactive. Whenever you make a change, the module automatically does a design or a check, depending on the type of change you made. If you would prefer to avoid the short delay that this causes each time you make a change, you should untick the Auto option at the bottom and then just click the Design or Check buttons whenever you're ready. The status bar at the bottom gives a snapshot of the results. Green is a pass, red is a fail, and yellow is used for warnings. Blue is also used to display messages if the design can't proceed. The right-hand side of the status bar shows the critical load case, the critical zone, the governing utilization ratio, and the governing failure mode. And the box to the right of that shows whether the last operation was a design or a check. Bending moment and shear force diagrams show the envelope of moments and shears and you can select between showing the ultimate, serviceability, or sustained load cases. 
You can even digitize the values in the bending moment and shear force envelopes by hovering the mouse over any point of interest. The green lines above and below the bending moment envelope show the bending capacity of the beam. They are extremely useful because by looking at how closely they track the shape of the bending moment envelope, you can get a good indication of how efficient the design is. For example, if we switch the design priority to minimum steel, you can see that the capacity lines close in on the bending moment envelope, indicating a slightly more efficient design than before. However, in order to get this level of efficiency, many different bar sizes are required. As you can see if you view the reinforcement table for the entire beam. This is impractical, and so we recommend that you use minimum layers or minimum bars in most cases. SpaceCast automatically subdivides each span into a number of zones that you can control. For example, five zones per span means that there is a zone over each support, plus three equal length zones in each span between the faces of the supports. You can even have different numbers of zones in different spans. You can see the zones marked in the diagram panels, and you can go to any zone by just clicking it in one of the panels. Once you get to the desired zone, you can see its cross-section details in the bottom panel, including its reinforcement and dimensions. You can ensure that the bar sizes don't change from one zone to the next by ticking the Same Bar Size in All Zones option. Plus, for T or L beams, you can allow the top bar to be placed outside the stirrups if they don't fit inside. To limit the range of bar sizes that will be used in a design, you can set minimum and maximum limits separately for the top and bottom bars. You can also limit the maximum stress in the main bars under the serviceability limit state to a predefined value if desired. For end bar anchorage, bars can be cogged or hooked or left straight. Any changes you make to the bar anchorage are shown in the 3D beam at the top. Development lengths for all bars are calculated and shown in the beam. You can turn them off if you just want to see where the bars start and finish at the zone boundaries. You can also turn off the stirrups, bars, or dimensions for a clearer view. Moment redistribution is available, which reduces the negative moments over the supports and increases the span moments accordingly. It can be applied to just the internal supports or all supports. You can specify the amount of redistribution and select whether the amount applies at the support center lines or at their faces. Let's turn it on and see what happens to the design. If you look at the bending moment envelope, you can see that a second envelope has now appeared, which represents the redistributed moments. The moment capacity lines also move slightly due to the new arrangement of reinforcement. Ultimately, though, the design fails in this case because the moment redistribution violates some of the design code conditions that must be met. We will therefore leave it turned off. If you wish to perform a check instead of a design, you can change any of the bar sizes or layer arrangements in the central part of the data panel. Any changes you make are just for the specific zone currently selected. However, you can click the Copy to All Zones buttons to replicate them along the entire beam. Remember that if the Auto option is ticked, then as soon as you make a change, an automatic check is done and the diagrams and status bar are updated accordingly. As soon as you make any reinforcing bar changes, the beam is locked to guard against you accidentally performing a design and consequently losing your changes. If you really want to perform a design on a locked beam, you must unlock it first.
Before we leave the reinforced concrete beam editor, there are a few final things to look at. The Deflections tab lets you see the elastic, short-term, and long-term deflections. The elastic deflections can be shown for any of the serviceability load cases and should match the space gas analysis results. The short-term deflections are based on the cracked section properties using any of the serviceability load cases, and the long-term deflections, taking into account creep, can be shown for the sustained load cases. At any stage, you can click the Output tab to get a list of the key variables used in the design or check. Or, for a more comprehensive report, you can click the Report button and then choose between various types of reports. Buttons on the side also let you change preferences, or export your beam in the form of CAD drawings or images. Assuming that we're happy with the design, we can finish up by clicking the OK button to save and exit. A number of other beams in this model have already been designed, and to see them all, we will now open the Concrete Manager. The Concrete Manager shows all your beams, columns, and footings in the table at the bottom and lets you open any one of them by double-clicking it in the table. You can also redesign or check all your Concrete members in batch mode Change Preferences, and Generate Reports. For more information about the Concrete Manager, view its more detailed video or read about it in the Space Gas Help. Finally, even if you haven't purchased the reinforced concrete beam module, you can still run it in a demo mode that has all features fully activated but with the cross-sections restricted to predefined dimensions.